Hey guys. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. How you doing? Cause raindrops keep falling on my head. But that doesn't mean I won't be soon be going wet. <laughs> what are we doing today? Crying's up for me. Oh, the raindrops keep falling on my head. They keep falling because I'm free. I today, well, I was going to make a sticky chocolate fudge cake, but a number of people requested that I didn't. They said, can you make something healthy? Something that I could have as a healthy snack or I could have as a healthy lunch? So I said, yes. So if you're just joining us and you're not live with us, just scroll ahead to two minutes where that's where I'll start the recipe. And Mark will tell me when we're two minutes in. So, mackerel pate. I'm going to use smoked mackerel. I'm going to use Philadelphia cheese with chives, but you could use plain Philadelphia cheese or any cream cheese. Um, I'm going to flavour today with lemon and chopped beetroot. Why um, did you hold it so high I couldn't see it? Oh, sorry, and chopped beetroot. What's really what? nice, what's really nice with this is horseradish, but I haven't got any. So imagine that I've also held up a little pot of horseradish with a little teaspoon beside it because a teaspoon of horseradish in this would be just blooming. So what are you putting in lemon. instead? Lemon. Lemon. So nothing spicy? Uh, spicy, no. Well, like hot, because horseradish yeah, is hot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like mustard. Oh, well, I do. Yeah. Is that, is, for me, it's English mustard almost. to make Melba toast. It's the easiest thing in the world. So, cut your bread into, oh my god I hope this bread isn't too thin. And then what you do is, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to toast it first. And then you toast it. And then I'll show you next what you do. <laughs> two minute, two thicker, minutes in. When it's thicker, so what you do is, you slice it down the mid when it's thicker, but I can't oh. do that, so I'm going to cook it first. Okay. To make Melba toast, but we'll cook it and then we'll do it. So I'm going to pop that under the grill. Don't worry, you don't need to see this. Just pop it under the grill. Hello, everyone. How are we all? Look, look at the weather. Remind me about the grill so it doesn't burn. Uh, remember the grill. Remember the grill. Look. Rainy, rainy here. Is it rainy, rainy where you are? Actually, instead of grilling it, I'm definitely going to forget that. I'm going to put a piece in the toast. Hi, Anne Murray. Hi, Hilary Weeks. Hi, Layla. I'm all right. A bit flat today. I'm all right. Um, I'm going to put this in the toaster. Do you, want to, do you want me to show you putting it in the poster? Because toaster? that's going to take too long and it, I might burn it. <laughs> right. So, mackerel pate. If you get mackerel from the fishmongers, it is so much nicer. We go to this place sometimes, this isn't from there, called Moxton's. I think there's quite a few Moxton's. And they smoke it in the fishmongers and it's so delicious that you don't need actually to put any cream cheese because it's so soft and buttery that when you, when you break it up, it, it actually doesn't need cream cheese, but any other mackerel does. And it is really nice, the cream cheese in it. So just... Um, Mush up, start by mushing up, technical term that, mushing up your mackerel. I'll show you just how easy this dish is. Hello, Nicholas, Nicola Hyde. And Mark, you love this dish, don't you? I do. Um, in fact, my friend Kay, Kay Adams from Loose Woman, she's a terrible cook, even though I write a whole cookbook to try and teach her how to cook. No, she's got better, actually, she's got better. But this, she makes all the time because she says it's fail-proof. She makes it when she has people over to dinner. So you can make this fancy and have it. Gabrielle says it already looks yummy. Yeah, well, I'm celebrating. All you've done is scrape it around the plate. Because it is so nice. And you know what? Don't shy away with kids and babies with smoked mackerel. Both our girls loved smoked mackerel when they were little, loved it. And of course, it's got all those really good oils that you need, really good fats. Do you know that, so, Chi Chi? Very, very good for you, smoked mackerel. Everyone say hello to Chi Chi. Chi Chi's saying hello. Say hello, everyone, to Chi Chi. Everyone's saying hello, Chi Chi. 
So they're this, not yet, but they're about to. So this one has some black pepper on top, so yeah. but I'm still going to add a bit more black pepper. So don't forget that. Don't shy away from smoked mackerel with children. They love it. Woof, they Chi Chi, really woof. Love, they really love the strong flavour. A bit, a bit, you, I don't know. It's so, I find it so surprising when my kids loved olives and hummus when they were little. And mackerel has the same effect. So I found this the other day. I'd forgotten about Philadelphia cheese with chives. I love it with chives. You know what else I love? Primula cheese with chives. I'm just a bit of a chive girl. But absolutely don't have to use the chive in. So um, that was probably two tablespoons of cheese. And I've used two small mackerel fillets. Okay. So I'm just going to put that into my bowl. And if you want to do mm. nothing more than this, that's a mackerel pate. I mm. know oh, she loves it. Get her. You love it, don't you? You've already got a mackerel pate, just with that. Oh. Oh, dear. Just with that, that's already a mackerel pate, and it will already be totally delicious. So if you want to stop just there, you can. I'm going to add some zest of lemon. Use an unwaxed lemon so you don't eat the wax. Turn it. Oh, don't forget your grill. Yeah, I've turned that one off. Keep, just, just, oh, there it goes, that gorgeous smell. Keep turning it so you don't go past that yellow bit. You don't want to get in. Don't take that. the pith. You don't want the pith. Oh, oh, Mark, how good does it smell? Tell it them. smells of lemon. The gorgeous smoky fish, just getting a hint of the chives. It smells brilliant in here, guys. Really, really good. It smells of lemon and fish. And Great lemon, smells. And They're making oh, me almost drool as much as Chi Chi. I can't have fish without lemon. I always have a bit of lemon with my fish. So, a little bit. Making of full use of the lemon there. Yeah, I'm just going to give a little squeeze. Why do they not wax lemons, Anne Marie Franklin wants to know? Um, I suppose so they'll last longer. Do you think not? Think so they look prettier in the shop? Nah, probably that as well, but yeah, just to keep them. Right, okay. This stage, I'm well aware, many people do not like beetroot. I effing love it. But, Mark, there could be children. That's why I said effing. No, you're not allowed to say that either. Can I say being? Right. Poo? No. Bum. No, stop now. Poo, poo, bum, bum. Mark, stop it. Come on, we must be allowed to say that, guys, mustn't we? Mark, are you on the... Di I'm trying to show them how to make the dish. It's just in even little cubes. Yeah, people are going yuck beetroot, yum beetroot. Yeah, you don't have, obviously you don't have to add the beetroot. You could add some chopped celery, you don't have to add anything. But beetroot and mackerel are a match made in heaven. You often see it in really posh restaurants. Mackerel and beetroot as a starter and I always order I can it. Eat beetroot. And then I'm always really annoyed because they don't put enough beetroot. I can eat beetroot just like that. that. I saved that for you, baby. Oh, did you? Yeah. So there we go. Going in. Going in. Mmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh, don't, darling, that's my display plate. You're very annoying today! You are no annoying. Well, that beetroot didn't taste of anything. Well, don't tell them that. No, no, no. But they're not, no, but I mean, most beetroot does. It's good. Well, it's organic. I don't know why it's mm. <laughs> Top quality beetroot. Yeah, yeah, right. It looks lovely. It might be a little bit I cold. love the colour it goes. Look, it goes pink. Yeah, I think often people make a mistake, make the mistake with beetroot of serving it really cold and anything really cold loses its flavour. Even, you know, even if I'm making the guys chicken wraps for lunch, I get the chicken wrap out earlier. Just, I get the chicken out a bit earlier out of the fridge, an hour before or so. People are so paranoid that if you keep chicken out of the fridge for an hour, you're all going to die of food poisoning. You're not. Everything tastes better. Awful. Freezing cold salad. Oh no, horrible. Just adding a bit more. Someone said if you don't like fish, is there a replacement? Um, well, you could make this pate with the cream cheese. I mean, chicken livers. You can cook chicken livers down. That's how pate is made. Not if you're a vegetarian. But this is... Yeah, why not do, you could do the cream cheese, you could do finely chopped beetroot, you could do finely chopped capers, and um, yeah, be nice. I'll try and think, I'll try and make up a vegan one for you, a veggie one. 
Oh, look at that. Isn't that like, we know how delicious this is. Put it into your little pot. No. Now, the thing is with this, is if you are watching how your carbs and all of that, you could do celery sticks with this would be lovely, or little, um, you know the little cos lettuces, scoop them up. So let's see, let's get our Melba toast. Vanessa Wild, capers, yum. I hate capers. Mark capers make me do this. No, no, give away, don't like you. That's what they make me do. He hates capers. You can see now if I'm gonna be able to. Cut this. That's an impossible task. That is a Melba toast. Why is it? Why is that a Melba toast? Just a very thin toast. Hello, Jan Galvin. Well, she. Oh, look at that! Look. But you see, that's why I wanted to cut is it. Is there a special it, machine for making it? Because it was too it. thin. No, it's just because my bread. I would have cut it like that. And you put needed it under thicker. The grill. You needed yeah, thicker slices. Oh, well. I'm just going to pop that under the, in the grill. That'll oh. be fine. This will be Melba toast. Okay. What do you think, Kooks? Is that all right for Melba toast? Kiki. Mm. Uh, Kooks. Chi Chi. Chi Chi. Chi Chi. Is that good for Melba toast? Chi Chi. Hey. So, whenever I do anything, ever I put anything in the plate, I always try and put a bit of green. We've got loads of spinach in the garden. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have it later, aren't I? Healthy greens, so, oh my God. I can see that any minute now, this bag of salad is gonna turn, so I'm gonna eat all of that today. All of it, so it's so good for you. And I'm gonna eat whatever Mark says is ready to pick from the garden. That'll be my dinner. So a bit of green, oh, it's looking lovely, isn't it? Oops. My mother's toast Thanks, Jesse Wayne. Nice and thin and crisp. It's so that you don't eat too, too much bread, too many carbs. You know, it's, it's a delicate. To be honest, I prefer a nice thick slice of bread. Oh, well, thanks, Pixel. You enjoyed. Go and check out our Confessions of a Modern Parent, guys, on podcasts. Right. iTunes. I'm going to try a bit. Ooh. Oh, Gigi. Oh. So, so, so. I was going to suggest a bit more pepper. So delicious, Mark. Yes. Have some. Mm. Okay. It's really, really good. I cannot tell you how delicious that is. It's really, really nice, nice, isn't it? Really nice. Mm. Really tasty. Honestly, guys, have well, a go at it. Mm. It's really, really lovely. You saw how easy it is. You can make a big vat of it and it will last a while in the fridge and makes a really nice snack or a whole lunch or a starter if we're ever having people around again. Love you. We'll see you tonight, 10.30 for our late night live, the night shift. Chi Chi, is that nice? <laughs> Do you want some? Mm.